Hi, it's Nicole. We are talking about The Tempest by Shakespeare today. To be honest, I find it a difficult play, a lot more difficult than the previous Shakespeare plays I read. I said in my 2023 planning video that we are going to be schoolmates and learn together. In this video, I'm going to share a few observations and interpretations about The Tempest and some questions that I find fascinating but have no answer to. Please share your thoughts if you are a fellow beginner and have similar questions to show solidarity or if you are a more experienced reader, please share your answers or interpretations with us. I will start with the story itself just briefly. A storm and a shipwreck landed a group of people on a desert island where Prospero and his daughter Miranda have lived for the last 12 years. Prospero was the Duke of Milan. He and his daughter were exiled to this island because his brother Antonio and the king of Naples Alonso, they plotted against him. Prospero is a magician with the help of a spirit called Ariel. They designed the shipwreck which brought Antonio, Alonso and a group of people onto the island and now it's time for Prospero to revenge. In this scene, Prospero tells Miranda how they were expelled from Milan and came to this island. We find out how Prospero was usurped by his brother Antonio. According to his own words, Prospero gave the management of his affairs to his brother and got completely lost in secret studies. He whom next to thyself of all the world I loved, and to him put the manage of my state. The government I cast upon my brother, and to my state grew stranger, being transported and wrapped in secret studies. I thus neglecting worldly ends, all dedicated to closeness and the bettering of my mind. His monologue gives me the sense that Prospero had no interest in governing his people or carrying out the duty of his office. He just wanted to read all day. Me, poor man, my library was dukedom large enough. And Gonzalo, on the night of the exile, knowing I loved my books, he furnished me from my own library with volumes that I prize above my dukedom. There's no mentioning of how well he loved his people or how wise he ruled the place. Do you think it's fair to ask that if Prospero prized his library above his dukedom, why did he bother him so much when the dukedom was taken away from him? It sounds to me like Prospero wants the title, the honor and the right without the responsibility or the hard work. I obviously don't think Antonio was justified to disrome and murder Prospero, but I don't feel much sympathy for Prospero either. I'd like to do nothing and read all day as well, but if I did and lost my job as a result, I couldn't really complain, could I? That was what happened 12 years ago. Now back to the present. I feel like Prospero kept his habit of letting others do the work, even after he got to the island. We don't see him doing any magic, we only hear about his magic. We see Ariel and Caliban doing everything for him, especially Ariel. I don't mean he can't do magic, he probably can perform pretty powerful magic. We can tell mostly from Ariel and Caliban's attitudes towards him, they both serve him out of fear. If thou neglects or dost unwillingly what I command, I will rack thee with old cramps, fill all thy bones with aches, make thee raw, that beasts shall tremble at thy din. No, pray thee, I must obey, his art is of such power. Generally speaking, the relationship between Prospero and Ariel is a lot easier than Caliban, but notice after Prospero reminds Ariel how he rescued him, he should be more thankful, Prospero demands Ariel's submission ultimately with a threat too. If thou more murmurst, I will rent an oak and peg thee in his naughty entrails, 
till thou hast howls away twelve winters. Prospero has power over Ariel and Caliban, but his magic seems to cover only certain areas. Miranda doesn't like having Caliban around at all, but Prospero says, We cannot miss him. He does make our fire, fetch in our wood, and serves in offices that profit us. In Hagseed, Margaret Atwood's retelling of the Tempest, Caliban stinks of fish because he catches fish for Prospero and Miranda to eat. Here are a few more things Caliban says he will not have to do anymore if he gets a new master. No more dams I'll make for fish, nor fetching in firing at requiring, nor scrape trenchering, nor wash dish. Prospero's magic can confine spirits and monsters or give them pain, but cannot make the house warm, put food on the table, or wash dishes. Is it because those tasks are too basic and everyday that you would be too low for him to stoop? <laughs> These are magic spells that he doesn't care to learn or perform. A servant can do it. Just like attending to his worldly affairs below him, a brother can do that. Only his books and secret studies are worth his while. So Prospero has servants. What do the servants say? Caliban's curses are very informative. It talks about the progress of his relationship with the island and with Prospero. This island's mine by Sycorax, my mother, which thou takest from me. When thou comest first, thou strokest me and made much of me. Who's give me water with berries in it, and teach me how to name the bigger light and how the less, that burn by day and night. Then I loved thee, and showed thee all the qualities of the isle, the fresh springs, brine pits, barren place and fertile. Cursed be I that did so. All the charms of Sycorax, Toes, beetles, bats light on you. <laughs> Caliban is very creative with his swearing and curses. For I am all the subjects that you have, which first was mine own king. And here you style me in this hard rock, whilst you do keep from me the rest of the island. By Caliban's own account, Prospero treated him kindly and taught him like a child, and in return, Caliban loved and worshipped Prospero. But Caliban, at some point, seek to violate the honour of my child, and that's Miranda, and Caliban became a despised slave. And Caliban, in turn, hates him as a master. As soon as Caliban meets Stefano and tastes his alcohol in very quick succession, he bows down and worships him instead. That's a brave god, and bears celestial liqueur. I will kneel to him. I will swear upon that bottle to be thine true subject, for the liqueur is not earthly. I will show thee every fertile inch of the island, and I will kiss thy foot. I pray thee, be my god. I will kiss thy foot. I will swear myself thy subject. Notice the keyword subject. Earlier, Caliban cursed himself to have become Prospero's subject. Now, he willingly becomes Stefano's subject. Then Caliban promises exactly the same things he did for Prospero. I will show thee the best springs. I will pluck thee berries. I will fish for thee. I will get thee wood enough. A plague upon the tyrant that I serve. I will bear him no more sticks, but follow thee, thou wondrous man. I pray thee, let me bring thee where crabs grow and I, with my long nails, will dig thee pig nuts, show thee a jay's nest, and instruct thee how to snare the nimble marmoset. It's a type of monkey. I'll bring thee to clustering filberts. It's a type of hazelnut tree. And sometimes I'll get thee young scamels from the rock. Not sure what a scamel is. My book thinks it's either a bird or a crab. Wilt thou go with me? Caliban promises to show all the riches and the treasures of the island to Stefano, even though he just said, cursed be I that did so. He forgets all about how he is enslaved by one master, now he wants another. 
he hasn't learned the lesson at all. <laughs> or has he? I wonder if Caliban is being genuine here. He first says, I'll follow thee, and then quickly it becomes, will you go with me? In the next act, Caliban turns surprisingly crafty, persuading Stefano to commit a murder for his own advantage. Maybe Caliban is not trading one slavery with another, he's plotting for a real freedom. He's going to get rid of Prospero by the hands of Stefano, and Stefano can't enslave him, because unlike Prospero, Stefano has no magic power. Then Caliban will be the king of the island again. Most of the time, Prospero calls Caliban slave and Ariel servant. It's a subtle difference. Where do you draw the line? Ariel serves a lot more cheerfully, but he does demand liberty right at the beginning. I pray thee, remember I have done thee worthy service, told thee no lies, made no mistakings, served without or grudge or grumbling. There is a third person who is a slave servant. It's surprisingly the Prince Ferdinand. I say this for a few reasons. Firstly, Ferdinand is commanded to gather logs, a job usually done by Caliban. And secondly, Prospero treats him just like Ariel and Caliban. He speaks to his daughter, follow me, speak not you for him, he's a traitor. Come, I'll manacle thy neck and feet together. He's going to tie him up, just like he ties Caliban onto a rock and threatens to confine Ariel in a tree. His relationship with people is total control through intimidating. You can see it in Ariel, Caliban, and Ferdinand. He also sent a harpy to frighten Alonso and Antonio and gets goblins on Stefano and Trinculo. He, he doesn't treat Miranda that way, obviously, but maybe that's because uh, Miranda doesn't rock the boat and is not out of his control. But there is something funny about their interaction too. When Prospero recounts his misfortune to Miranda, he repeats every few lines. I pray thee mark me, dost thou attend me? Thou attendst not. I pray thee mark me, dost thou hear? Why does he have to repeatedly ask for her attention? Is Miranda not paying attention, not listening carefully? He replies that she is, and it'll be odd if Miranda doesn't pay attention since this is the first time she ever hears about their history. Or is he showing glimpses of his obsession for complete attention and control over even his own daughter? I am sure there are many ways to interpret Prospero's strange behavior, that's just my guess. The third reason for saying Ferdinand is a servant is in the language he uses himself. I am, in my condition, a prince, Miranda. I do think a king. I would not so. I would no more endure this wooden slavery than to suffer the flesh fly below my mouth. Hear my soul speak. The very instant that I saw you, did my heart fly to your service. There resides to make me slave to it, and for your sake am I this patient logman. Where Caliban plots his freedom with murder, Ariel gains his freedom with all his toil, Ferdinand's freedom is a willing bondage. My husband then, I with a heart as willing as bondage, heir of freedom, here's my hand. Those are just some of my thoughts on a few scenes. There are a few more rabbit holes that I didn't have time to go down. One question is, is there a emphasis on clothes? For example, obviously there are Prospero's magic garments and after the group is washed ashore, their clothes are pointed out repeatedly as as good as new. Trinculo and Stefano are distracted by clothes on a line when they attempt the murder, and Prospero says to one character, hang not on my garments. Do clothes have any significance 
here. Another question is, why does Prospero decide to give up his magic and his book? But this rough magic, I hear abjure. I'll break my staff, bury it certain fathoms in the earth, and deeper than did ever plummet sound, I will drown my book. Without Ariel and his magic, Prospero is powerless. Maybe the magic is only for the island, he can't wield it in civilization. But without his magic and his books, what will Prospero's life look like in Milan? He won't even have Miranda anymore. His books are sometimes referred to in plural, sometimes in singular. Are there any significance in that? And what's the purpose of the magic circle in the last scene? Another observation. Miranda asks Ferdinand, do you love me? But do you notice that's not the only time that question is asked in the play? Ariel also asks Prospero, do you love me? In Act 4, Scene 1. What's the meaning of linking the two relationships up with the exact same question? And lastly, what does Prospero want? Revenge? Yes, did he get it? Uh, kind of. Alonso feels guilty, but his brother never repents. But Prospero, in the end, forgives all of them in one fell soup. So in theory, there's no revenge on the worst criminal. Maybe Prospero is just a lonely old man, willing to give up his books, magic, and hatred for some civilization and company. Maybe that also explains why he's so reluctant to let Ariel go. If I was on a desert island with a child, a Caliban, and the Ariel as daily companions, I'd use all my power, even gentle bullying, to keep Ariel with me for as long as possible. There are many, many more questions, and I've been thinking about them for most of January. I might revisit The Tempest in the future, but for now, I think I had enough. <laughs> I'm going to end this video with my favorite lines from the play. Full fathom five, thy father lies. Of his bones are coral made. Those are pearls that were his eyes. Nothing of him that does fade, but does suffer a sea change into something rich and strange. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next one.